<laughs> Aloha! It's it's uh, Googie Morning with Vacation Jason. One, two, three, four. <laughs> to all on the internet. My name is Vacation Jason. If you didn't know by now, <laughs> I am the world's number one vacation expert. I am the master of all things relaxing and tropical and googie. And that is why I bring to you now this live streamed weekly broadcast where I teach you and help you celebrate the magical time of day that is the morning the most googie time of the day when the sun rises the water uh comes out of the air it touches the leaves and kisses the ground and everything gets hydrated people begin waking and they rub their eyes and they go it's a googie morning it's a googie day ah can you feel it can you sense it? Today, so many different avenues and paths we could go down. We are sensing right in the present moment that this day has the potential to be unlike any day we have experienced before. My banana from the tree of the banana tree. I didn't have breakfast. I was so excited to do my show today. I woke up at 5 a.m. and I didn't eat. I had a cold brew, which is new to me. Get this. Coffee. People take a little berry, which I like, and then they take the they take the bean out of the berry, they dry it. And then they grind it up, pour hot water over it. You drink it, you get energy. But get this. You can make it cold, and somehow that makes it even stronger. And I drank that with some coconut milk, some water. I'm messed up. And I did it two days in a row. Maybe it's not for me. But I feel good. And this banana, the potassium 
is bringing me back. I lost all my energy playing that guitar solo. Got to give a quick shout out to the king of surf guitar, Dick Dale. Dick Dale, legend of the surf guitar. Miserloo from Pulp Fiction. That's him. That's Dick Dale jamming. He died. He's dead. But we pay tribute to Dick Dale every time we pick up a surf guitar. He played with amazing style, innovation. He brought the sounds of the surf to the airwaves via the guitar. He also wore a shiny headband that looked great. We love Dick Dale on Googie Morning. Dick Dale on the Deltones. All right. We got a jam packed show. And by jam, I mean the fruit preserve. Right now, if it's possible, I want to get Jersey Dave in the mix. Jersey Dave, let me hear you. Let me see you. Hey, Jason. Jersey Dave. He's he's helping produce this show. Jersey Dave, famously not a morning person. No, nah, man. He doesn't want to do this. I love your energy. It is It's very helpful. But no, I'm not a morning person, and I don't. I don't share your googiness yet, but, you know, by the end of the, the hour, who knows? Listen, it may take 10 years. This quarantine may take 10 years. And that is, uh, that's probably realistic at this point. That's I'm not, you. that's not realistic. Not? No. All right. No one else is saying 10 years. Start that's the, the clock. I've heard. Start the clock. All right, I'm starting Start the, the clock. clock, my man. By the way, do you have the capabilities to put up a, a little counting clock? No, that is one of the biggest questions we've had. And the answer is currently no. All right. Best you can do is like an on-screen like kind of a thing. All right. Well, start the clock. <laughs> um, <laughs> it may take 10 years of being in quarantine, doing this broadcast weekly at 11 a.m. on Thursdays. But we are going to share this googie energy with you we're going to spread it out in little concentric circles all across this map. And we're going to make sure that everyone who watches this show learns how to have a googie morning and celebrate the best time of day in order to bring that into the rest of their day and then transform their lives through the power of getting googie. There was something else I wanted to mention at the top of the show. Oh, yeah. This show is on Planet Scum. Dot live. It's a new online uh, uh, digital venue of some sort where you get to donate money to the performers and the uh, production infrastructure. So if you like what you see and you want to make this show shine and sizzle like a big plate of bacon, all you got to do is click, uh, what is it, like uh, contribute to the show, donate or something? Yeah, if you go to plantscum.live, they'll be up at the top, um, support the show. So you can just go click on that. It'll take you to a PayPal. There'll be a drop-down link um, where you can, uh, a drop-down menu where you can select what show specifically you'd like to uh, support. And uh, yeah, you, you can support you can mornings right now if you want. You can support yeah, the show. Yeah, you could. You could donate as little as a dollar to this show because I got big plans. First of all, someone once donated 69 cents, so you can even go less than a dollar. Nice. It was pretty nice. If everyone wants to donate 69 cents, that's going to go a long way because, listen, I know everyone is mystified by this beautiful beach sunrise we have going on behind me. This is actually a piece of paper with crayon that I drew to remind myself that this is what I'm after. The beautiful waves, the luscious sand you put your feet in and it feels like when you, when you put your glasses frames in that hot glass beads at Lens Crafters. <laughs> The beautiful sky with the pink clouds, the purple space above that, the sun with, I should get some sunglasses to put on this sun to let you know it's cool. But I look, this is paper. 
I'm inside. I've been inside for like 69 days. And while it's been pretty nice, I'm pretty lucky that I am fortunate enough to be in this environment. 69 days? I lost count. <laughs> so you ended at 69. Anything above that, just call it 69. because I, I lost count a long time ago. Look, I've grown this beard. I have realized today that me being inside growing a beard like this is like Tom Hanks being a castaway on an island. If I was on that island, I'd be fine. You know that's where I want to be. Yeah. Hey, I'm I got to stop one. you just because this is longer than I expected to be on air and we have an actual guest. So I might just go. <laughs> this is important. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Our, our very, the very first guest on Googie Morning, on Planet Scum. You've seen him on FX. You've seen him on HBO. You've even seen, you've even seen him on True TV. He was revealed to be Big Man 6 on the Chris Gethard Show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Justin Linville. Sorry. Hey, sorry. I was taking notes because everything you're saying is resonating with me. Um, I love um, starting the day with googiness will transform your life. Yes. That's, these are words to live by. Sunglasses make the sun look cool. Yes. Words to live by. How's it Those going, are the Jason? Two notes you took. What was that? Those are the two notes. Two notes. I, I had a couple other notes. Dick Dale, learn by Dick Dale. Oh, yeah. That's all I got, really. Cool. Well, Justin, take those notes, crumple them up, and throw them in the garbage because we're starting from scratch. I don't know if that's true. Yes. That looks like an expensive piece of paper. It was, it was a mo it was not ex I got the price actually it's a five dollar notebook from the six dollar notebook from Muji nice. sketchbook Muji yeah. Japan Muji a from very Japan island yeah it's a great island oh we got people from the UK tuning in that's incredible it's the mm -hmm. only show he's made is the Cats Live we're changing the game on Planet Scum also now known as uh, Scum Island as of when. Right now, we nice. made that decision together. <laughs> um, just, good googie morning to you. I got it. Googie morning. It's not good, good morning anymore. It's googie morning. Googie morning to you too, Jason. Thanks for having me. I'm I'm glad to be here on Scum Island. Um, thrilled, happy, excited. I'm proud to be the first guest. Yes. On googie mornings. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Would you like to perform a song? Um, I'm not really prepared to do that, but That's I guess cool. I could. Um, oh, you are? I guess I could. Please do. Please regale us. Wait. Gotta get the tempo right from this spontaneous song. Wait, wait, wait. I'm waiting. There we go. Floating in the deep blue ocean is where I got to truly know him. He was my friend, said he'd be there till the end, but when going got tough, he said that's enough, and so when I fell asleep, he swam away. And when I woke up, it was a lonely day, and so I swam, I swam, I swam, I swam, I swam, I swam. I swam, I swam, until I saw an island with palm trees in the sand. I couldn't believe it, I made it to dry land. And when I got there, guess who was there? My friend from before, waving his hand up in the air. He said, you have made it. This was all a test. I knew you could do it because you are the best. I said, how could you? What if I had drowned? He said, take off your glasses and look around. So I did, 
and the whole world changed into an arcade in downtown Los Angeles. <laughs> I looked down at my hands and my glasses were a joystick. I rubbed my eyes. This was no mistake. I looked at my friend. He was no longer there. Instead, there was a sign that said, player beware. So that was just off the cuff. Wow. Sort of, uh, Amazing. Thank you. I loved it. Thank I you. It five starfish. There we go. My goodness. Justin, it feels like we are <laughs> we are psychically on the same wavelength. I I mean, everyone knows my deal, mm -hmm. but that song was so googie. Yeah, That's I thought. You know, you're inspiring me to to chase the googie. I think I might get that tattoo, chase the googie, um, because it's just it's these are good words to live by. You know, I'm always looking for inspiration. I'm always looking for motivation, and I'm finding it in you. You know, you've got the right head on your shoulders. You are the only sane person I know. I've been waiting for people to catch on. I didn't think it would take one episode, but I, yeah, I'm the only one doing it right. Yeah, you are, man. I was I about to get angry that. about that, but it's okay. I just got to keep doing it the right way. I'm going to I'm gonna bring out something. I wasn't planning on this, but can you still hear me? I can hear you. So your lyrical content, your rhyme structure, your subject matter, and the general uh, unpredictable twists and turns that your storytelling in your lyrics took reminded me of – a very influential album that I turn to pretty much whenever I'm looking for inspiration. In, uh, I think, 1983 or 1984, the bassist of the Ramones, Didi Ramone, I'm going to talk about this album probably every episode I realize now. Didi Ramone quit the Ramones to start his rap career, and he changed his name to Didi King. And he made this album. It's called Standing in the Spotlight. And everyone can go listen to this on Spotify right now, standing in the spotlight. And it includes the song that is probably the most influential song of my life. It's called Commotion in the Ocean. And it's a story song about Dee Dee going to the beach, surfing, meeting mermaids. He gets his, he gets his toe bitten by a crab. He wants to get a suntan. Damn. This is the best song in the world. Uh, this, this is a real song. This is a real song on a real album. I'm just going to dramatically read the, 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 the lyrics for a oh, moment. Yeah. That's Perfect. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes like this. I am a surf nut, and the surf is up. I'm headed for Sunset Beach. It's not far, not hard to reach. Where coconuts grow on palm trees. I can smell the breeze. I want to ride the waves. I'm all excited about the surfing craze. I packed a picnic lunch. I hope I find a bunch of fun and clean sand. I want to get a suntan. Want to ride the surf at 90 miles an hour. Hope you don't get, get sour. <laughs> if you're freezing in New York, I've followed the stork and headed to the coast to do what I love most. Commotion in the ocean. So the Ramones are like a band made up of like if the Scooby-Doo mystery team were all shaggies of varying levels of uh, mental capacity, that's the Ramones. And then you take the shaggiest of the shaggy and then you make him so upset that he wants to quit the band and start a rap career when rap is people aren't quite sure if it's a cultural movement or just a fad. Right. He makes a novelty album. The first song on this album is called Mashed Potato Time. It features Debbie Harry sounding more bored than any singer has ever sounded in her life. I, I, I got to stop myself or I'm just going to. I know you can talk about it. I'm not talking about it. Keep talking about it. Oh, man. Okay, fine. I yeah. love it. Oh, okay. There's a song called... Uh, 
some of this album is actually good. Okay. It's, there's there's a song called The Crusher, which is kind of the close. It's like the most punk song. Like he's still a good punk singer, punk songwriter. Mm -hmm. He has a song called The Crusher. It's all about him being a professional wrestler and then yeah. getting scared to actually have a match. And then he puts on his – he gets his specific enough to say he's putting on his kids to run away. There's, there's a lot of recurring themes in this album that right. I don't think were intentional. D.D. King loves wearing pro-ked sneakers. Yeah. He loves – and you already heard this. He loves telling people not to get sour. Yeah. He loves rhyming that with our – did you do it more than once or just once? He does it more than once. Uh, this, you, you really need to work within a band if you're if you if you you really as an artist it is good to work with mold, more than one person just so you get outside opinion because somebody should tell them, you know, that hey, rhyme hey. just one of those rhymes, it's a it's a stupid rhyme. You can get away with it once. I really wish I could have been a fly on the wall for the, any part of the process with this album. I, I think we're going to have to do like some kind of Googie morning fan listen along because it really, it really does need to be heard to be believed. It's the best and worst uh, musical artifact that I know of. Well, it's unreal when an artist is doing something that they're very good at, which is, you know, playing rock music. And yeah. then they're like, I'm frustrated. I'm going to do something that I don't know how to do. And yeah. I'm going to do it in a really specific way <laughs> that, you know. There's so many different elements to it, too, because this guy was the genius savant who wrote the best Ramon songs. Mm -hmm. That You know, like very simple, very like concise, ergonomic songwriting. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden he's like trying to fit way too many words in the <laughs> it, 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 it. Yeah, oh. just changing his approach to songwriting totally. Just because you're changing your brain into thinking about music in a completely different way. Yeah. And it's like maybe you don't need to do that so publicly. I don't know. But you know, it's it's good that he's letting us see the experimentation, you know. Man, I I mean, if the album weren't one of the biggest uh, failures in the history of music. Um, I would have loved a follow up, but I think he got so embarrassed by it that he just went. He kind of like did the Johnny Carson thing, where like Johnny Carson retired but kept writing jokes and sending them in. Mm -hmm. That's what Dee Dee kept writing Ramon songs and sending them in, just not as part of the band. Like he would yeah. send them. Okay, got it. Interesting. Let's see. I had some. I had some more like. Pertinent questions for you specifically. But before we get to that, we're going to need the help of the audience watching along. Planet Scum, Scum Island. I need you to participate in a new event called Googie Image Search. What we're going to need you to do is go to Google and Google Image Search the googiest breakfast images you can find. Big stacks of pancakes. The freshest fruits, the, the most glistening bacon. And then take those images and tweet them at Planet Scum. And then Jersey Dave, not a morning person, he's gonna try his best to put those images up and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have a breakfast feast while answering, while talking about these questions I'm gonna ask you. Real quick, it's at Planet Scum Live. At Planet Scum Live. Oh, yeah, and use the hashtag uh, Googie Breakfast. G-O-O-G-Y Breakfast. So it'll oh. be a virtual feast. We'll be virtually feasting on these beautiful images. Yes, we will be, we will be, um, we will be, uh, uh, I want to say sup. Is supping a word? We're going to sup on the, I don't know. I, I don't know if supping is a word, but I, I, I understand the emotion behind the word and I can extract it. We're going to be savoring. Have you ever just like grabbed uh, like a juicy orange or something and then, or like a, and you squeeze it. So as you're biting it, the juice is just everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've all done that. Yeah, every day. Every day. Very good. Every day, man. Every day.
you're on a, you're on your you're well on your way to a, a googie morning. Yeah, I'm trying to learn. I'm learning from the best. I mean, this is if you've got, you know, if you've got Michael Jordan, the Michael Jordan of relaxing in the room. You, yes. you take you learn from this person, you know. I am the Michael Jordan of of mornings, not only because I am the best, but because I uh, ruthlessly talk shit about anyone who's trying to do it like me. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, that's how you be the best. That's how you be the best. You have to tear other people down. You know, I'm an unabashed capitalist, which reminds me, hit that drop down menu, donate 69 cents. Oh, I forgot to mention the whole reason I I, I, I went so long explaining this as a backdrop is we got to get me a more convincing backdrop. Mm -hmm. After we get Justin paid, we got to get a backdrop. Well, I'll happily sacrifice my payment for this backdrop. And I know I look, 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 I want you to have a backdrop, a beautiful backdrop. I priority priority is look, you were nice enough to wake up to get here at eleven. Yeah. I headed I headed it right out of my bed and right into the chair. We gotta get you your cut. And then after that, my again, cut is going to the green screen. If you wanna see uh if you in the future you want me to go green? And I'm not talking Joe Lieberman. I'm talking chroma key, Robert Downey Jr. level special effects. Yeah, you want this? You're gonna you want it? Wait, I don't think I know what that reference is. Chroma key? Chroma key is, I believe, the technical term for when you isolate the green in an image digitally and then you replace it with uh, uh, another digital image. Right, are you gonna replace it with a real beach or that image? That's a good idea. I should just green screen this. Yeah, you should scan that and then green this screen it. This is delicate. Out. This is actually a very thin piece of paper. Yeah. And it could fall at any moment. Yeah, I hope it doesn't no, I, fall. What I really want is uh, a beautiful stock image of a beach with mm -hmm. watermarks on it. Watermark, yeah. I don't want to pay for the image. I'm like wanna... Getty image across yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Giddy. Getty Googie, you know? <laughs> you want you want like Googie images across it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Speaking of mornings, Justin, do you have a morning routine? And if so, what what's what's part of your morning routine? Uh, I'm getting better about mornings in quarantine. Uh, I usually get out, take a walk, um, come back to my house, drink coffee, read the New York Times, um, and eat a little breakfast. Raisin yeah. bran or cinnamon life is what I usually do. Wow. What kind of milk? Uh, lactate milk. Wow. So it's real milk with the lactose taken out. Yes, exactly. Yeah, because I can't handle lactose. This what is very got? exciting. This is very exciting stuff, guys. What do you got against uh, coconut milk? Um, I never have been able. I, you know, this might be you know blasphemous. I've never gotten used to the taste of coconut milk. It's good. I don't. I don't see what the big deal is. I know. I know. Look, I, I know. I know. I, I use it in stuff like when I'm you know cooking, baking. I use coconut milk, but I don't necessarily use it in my cereal. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, buddy. This sucks. <laughs> I know. We were just getting somewhere. This fucking know. sucks, man. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. But look, I'll try it. If you told me if you told me to go out and get coconut milk, I would get it, you know. I, I would basically do whatever you want right now. That's how passionate I am. All right. I'm I I I live by you now. You oh. are my God. All right. <laughs> um, I don't want to. I don't want to get. I don't want to. I don't want to bring it down. I'm. I'm also. I'm gonna. I'm gonna hold back on endorsing a specific almond milk until they come forward as a sponsor for this show. Yeah. Are you trying to get sponsors? You're trying to get like. Um, I don't know a cruise line to sponsor the show or like a yeah i'll plug a cruise line now would be a great time hey you have a, 
You want to breathe on a bunch of people and you can't escape each other? Blank trademark cruise lines. So we'll we'll find the cruise line and we'll put it in and post. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, Great. any cruise line, you want me as a mascot? Someone who resents the idea of business in general? I'm your man. I heard cruise lines, cruise ships love you. I've I've heard many. I've heard a story about cru uh, you winning over a cruise ship full of people. That's just, you know, it's it's just kind of my thing. Yeah. What I do. This really did happen though. Uh, Gethard went was employed. Typical. He was hired to do a cruise ship, and he had an extra ticket. And he said, you know what? I'm going to do something nice for this vacation Jason guy for once in my life. He said it like this, actually. He went, you know what? I've been mean to this guy in the past. I think it's time. Do something nice for vacation Jason. He had snot coming out of his nose. Have you noticed that? He's always got like giant blobs of snot coming out of his nose when he's talking. It's true. We try not to say anything about it, but it's very, very true. It's just and then they start nodding, and they start like wiggling. On dribbling, and they start wiggling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah. So I'm dodging these snakes of snot. I'm going, whoa, what are you trying to tell me, man? Get those out of here. <laughs> Star Wars. No, that's so not the show I'm playing a scum. But he gave me a ticket to this cruise, expecting me in my natural element to fail miserably. And what happened instead? I started walking like a vacation all over that cruise ship. People kept coming up to me. They're going, hey, you look like you're supposed to be here. I said, yeah, I'm vacation Jason. I'm the world's number one vacation expert. And you're stuck on here with me. I'm not stuck on here with you. That's a threat. And then the next, yeah, I was threatening people. That's what I was doing. That's how I win them over. Long story short, me and Gethard, we were hired to do bingo, but not just any bingo. It was actually, it was breakfast, Bloody Mary bingo. All we had to do was say the names of the balls, the numbers, the, you know, B20. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's one, for example. Yeah, it's an example of what one of the balls might be. Yeah. We started bickering. We started fighting in our typical, you know, Abbott and Costello type way. He would bop me on the head. I fucking swung an axe, chopped his head off verbally. I promised everyone on the cruise ship we could do yoga together. Mm -hmm. People started coming up to me, giving me free drinks. People started coming up to me doing yoga. Man, there was one couple on the cruise ship. I was sitting with them on this couch. They We, we watched this couple come up dressed in uh, all marijuana leaf print suit and dress, mm -hmm. and they they were like they were like real, like they it seems like they go on cruises multiple times a year. But they sat back and they went, ah, yeah, they don't have any weed. They're stupid for walking around wearing those suits. And I said, yeah, that is pretty stupid. And then they said, uh, but we do. <laughs> And did they give you weed? They made me go up to their room, and then I had this flip cam because I was recording this for a documentary to be released. <laughs> they took the flip cam, they turned it on, and then they said, hey, did you know that 11 people go missing on cruise ships every year? <laughs> <laughs> I am surprised I made it out alive. But yeah, and, and then you, and then what happened? <laughs> yeah, great time. Great, great, great. That's all I need to say. And then I remember there's some incident that happened where you were on stage um, doing something. I don't know what you're doing on stage. Um, and then you gave them a political message. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, God. Okay. So five or six days on this cruise ship, I have become kind of like a self-appointed Mickey Mouse where I'm just always giving people high fives and, you know, this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm just in the buffet eating food as animated 
as I as I typically do, like a regular vacation, Jason. And I got I secured a um, a concert opportunity to perform my critically acclaimed eight year old rap mixtape, Coconut Berry Lemon Tree. Famous mixtape. If you haven't heard it, listen to it right now. Famous or after the stream, after Googie Morning. Have a Googie afternoon and listen to it. I think it's on uh, SoundCloud or yeah. YouTube. Um, I perform it. I was so in the zone. I was so feeling at my googiest. I had just been on this cruise ship for so many days with zero resistance. Even Chris Gethard himself was starting to kind of come to his senses and realize I'm googie. <laughs> I finished my last song, the amazing closer, Coconut Berry Lemon Tree. I have the mic. I tell people, you know, give it up for all the people working on this cruise ship so that we could go on vacation. Yeah. And then I started thinking globally, as I tend to do. We're on a living planet in the nature, in the middle of the sea. So I said something. I actually don't regret saying this. I said, stop the offshore drilling. <laughs> stop it. And then up on the balcony... I hear someone say the very famous Sarah Palin, John McCain, 2008 uh, slogan, drill, baby, drill. Made me uncomfortable, right? But, hey, I'm done. Had a great show. It's time to go eat dinner. I get off stage, and this, the drunkest guy I've ever seen in my life, also one of the tallest men I've ever seen in my life, mm -hmm. starts lumbering up to me. And he's got his finger out. He's going, I got a problem with what you said about offshore drilling. And, and I go, oh, yeah, why? And he goes, look, you can spin it any way you want to spin. Spin. You know, this is when Bill O'Reilly was still, you know, top yeah. guy on Fox News. Everybody knows the spin zone. Mm -hmm. The only spin zone I get involved with is the Frisbee store. Okay? But this guy – is telling me, you can spin it any way you want. You can spin. And then he grabs his wife by the neck, right? This is one of those kind of guys. And uh, <laughs> he goes, my wife, she loves horses. Like, what the fuck does that have to do with anything? <laughs> she goes, you can spin it any way. And then I was feeling so powerful. So googie, so hungry because I, I was we were getting we were getting we were biting into my dinner time. Mm -hmm. I said, you know what else is spinning? Planet Earth. <laughs> and that's when I think it was Casey Jost uh, got in between us and like physically held him back, and then I walked away with triumph. <laughs> I feel like I really got him there, you know? It was a very obvious. You did get him. You did get him. I think you made a difference on this on this cruise ship. I really do. Okay, Gethard is reminding me that during the bingo game, I started yelling that this is why capitalism is evil. And for some reason, they all cheered. I yelled, you're all slaves to capitalism. I don't think I used the S word. And then they cheered again. He's never seen anything like it. They were gambling for money. It made no sense. Yes. In the middle of them gambling for real money on a cruise ship, playing bingo, I took it upon myself to remind these people that money is an illusion and that capitalism is a construct that is tearing us at a, apart on the molecular level. Literally. And I told them that if they're if they, you know, just embrace the vacation vibes, they're already rich. And they started applauding the message that I was delivering, even though they had already <laughs> put down real money. They were already losing their money, hoping mm -hmm. to get it back in a game of bingo. <laughs> it was some of, that was one of the most fun experiences. Um, I think I think that I think that you should go on different cruise ships and radicalize people. I think that should be the next phase of your life is is cruise ship radicalization. Radical. Yeah. I would be into that. 
I think I will do that. Maybe I'll, it, it starts with me. I'm going to have to buy my way onto these cruise ships, but then they're going to start. Wait, I don't want money. Yes, I do. Uh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Donate, the, donate oh. the planet scum. 69 cents. We got to get Justin paid for that song. Royalties. Yeah, I'm trying to make royalties off the, off that song today. Let me ask you a question. And I, you know, and you don't have to say me the obvious answer. Mm -hmm. Justin, if you've ever had a morning hero, who is your morning hero? Um, morning hero. Uh maybe yeah, someone maybe you think of when you wake up. Someone you aspire to be? Yeah, maybe my dad. Because he wakes up very early. You know, he drinks his coffee, eats his breakfast. There's a morning drive where he listens to a radio show, and then he goes to work. Um, but he wakes up like six every day, and he's done it since like, you know, as far as I can remember. And I'm like, that's a very impressive way to live your life. Because then, you know, he finishes work early because he goes to work like, you know, two hours early. So he's done by like three or four. Um, yeah, that's a morning hero. That's a great morning hero. I don't like that he goes to work. Yeah, yeah, I knew that'd be, that'd be controversial. Do you think that no one should go to work? Is that is that part of your whole deal? I, you know, I skimmed an article on Jackalbin one time called "The Right to Be Lazy." On what? Jackalbin. Okay. It's a leftist uh, newspaper. Okay. Yeah, I'm reading. <laughs> Actually, I'm um, I'm gonna start a I'm gonna start the Vacation Jason book club. But anyway, uh, I read this article on Jackalbin. Okay. Called the right to be lazy, and yeah, I do have the right to be lazy. Somebody else do it. Fuck you, you know. Yeah, sure, sure. That's gonna be my first uh, featured column on Jackalbin. Is right to be lazy is is is. You don't have to work. You shouldn't. It's, like a, it's like it's gonna be a haiku, you know. I'm gonna write haikus for Jackalman. Have you ever watched the sunrise, Justin Linville? Um yes. I've had some late nights in my past where I have um stayed up all night and then been like, Oh, I'm watching the sunrise. But it's never been a thing where I wake up early to watch the sunrise. I'll just be staying up all night, rock and roll style. Um and then catch the sunrise. It's beautiful. It's amazing. That's pretty much all I had to that. You want to take a moment of silence for the sunrise? I'm going to watch the sunrise as we take that moment of silence. It's going to be a googie day. Justin, have you ever done that thing where you're laying in bed all peaceful? And then all of a sudden you go, oh, I got it's Monday. I gotta get to I gotta get like I gotta get to work or like yeah. I gotta or like yeah, or like you Oh no, it's Valentine's Day. I forgot to buy flowers. Yeah, yeah. Well I, when I do that, I'm like very much in, you know, I'm I'm doing my I gotta get to I gotta get to Midtown, you know. Yeah. I have an appointment that I forgot about, you know. Um It's important that you say that out loud too. Yes, you gotta say it out loud, otherwise, you know, it doesn't feel real, you know. Yes. Um I I might do that too much because my roommates are upset at me because I just I'm I'm yelling like once a week because I forget something like once a week. Every holiday escapes me. I forget that holidays are happening. So it's like, oh, it's Christmas, you know? Yeah, that's a... That's Whoa, a it's Earth Day, you know? Did you do anything special for Earth Day this year? I'm sorry? Did you do anything special for Earth Day this year? Well, Earth Day for me is special every year, not only because I love the planet Earth, but also because my mother was born on Earth Day. How nice. So, uh... This year for Earth Day, I made her a, a special tumbler. A a tumbler plate. As in a, as in a, a like a, a, a cup, like a glass. No, the blog. A blog, a special tumbler blog. Okay. Yeah, I made her a, a tumbler blog. 
a blog post or you made her like you made her a Tumblr that she can use? Well, I went around emailing uh, family and, and different loved ones and like old neighbors and stuff and asked them to make a video saying happy birthday. And then I put them all on the Tumblr. Got it. Okay, cool. That sounds great. That's a wonderful, that's a wonderful birthday, Earth Day surprise. It's pretty good. Also, man, it would have been great to go outside for Earth Day. Yeah. But, you know, it'll make next Earth Day more special because now they'll, we'll have more appreciation for the outside, you know? Absolutely. Oh, man, I can't. Can you imagine the very first outdoor Googie Morning episode? Oh, that'll be great. I hope it. I hope it happens before it's cold outside, because that'll be. That'll. Be, I imagine it'd be hard for you if it's cold outside. That. Yeah, I've been doing these crazy breathing exercises to help me withstand the cold. Okay, how long have you been doing this? About a week. Okay, you're you're preparing for this upcoming fall winter. Mm hmm. And can I see what these exercises look like? Yeah, I, I'm not going to do all of it, but it's basically you're taking in more air than you're exhaling. Mm hmm. And I'll do that for like 30 breaths. And then after 30 of those, I'll exhale really big. And I'll hold it. And I can hold my breath for like two minutes. Oh, that's great. And then I do it again. Do that like four times. Hold my breath for like an average of one and a half to two minutes. And a feeling of euphoria comes over me. <laughs> That's great. It's a natural high, man. And then I'm able to stretch my legs, vacation yoga. Mm -hmm. And then I get in a cold shower. And man, normally, you yeah, yeah, I get the cold water off of me. <laughs> you breathe through it, your body gets used to it. That sounds great. I like the way you do things, man. Me too. <clears throat> and look. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not a doctor. I know that this can uh, – don't do it while you're driving. Don't do it while you're standing up. I do it while I'm laying down. Mm -hmm. I don't want anybody knocking their head on the counter. Yeah. But more importantly, I don't want anybody uh, – no, that's that's probably the worst thing. Yeah, don't do that. Um, But look, there's this guy, Wim Hof. He's this crazy – I think he's Dutch. He's like – he's the ice man. And he he does these things like he'll run he'll run up a snowy mountain in his boxer shorts, or he'll get in he'll swim around in the waters of Antarctica. All because he's mastered his breathing. That's wild. We're probably one of the only humans to like have that experience and like uh, have the experience and live to tell the tale of uh, swimming in Antarctica. Antarctica. I because think he mastered like, breathing. I want to train and and do that too. Yeah, I believe in you, man. I learned about the Wim Hof method because uh, – hey, what's up, Jersey Dave? Hey. I was just doing these breathing exercises, and my roommate got really scared and was like, are you okay? You're just hyperventilating for no reason. <laughs> but I'm okay. And I feel pretty good, actually. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's all about the brain. The brain <laughs> needs oxygen, and the brain is what controls everything else. So if your brain is getting like a supercharge of oxygen, that's going to help the brain function in new and exciting ways. Mm -hmm. I do feel like I have a bit of a head high happening right now, which I was not expecting. Head high. I mean, it's, it's cool. It's a cool, cool feeling. Cool way to have a, a morning. Yeah, man. Well, do you hey. want to do these um, Google image search results? Oh, do yeah. Oh, I, need, I need to sup on some Googie breakfast. Let's get to supping, I think. All right. All right, first image up. Let's see. I'm gonna fuck with this tripod too. I'm tired of like leaning over so bad. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Wow, <clears throat> that what a spread. Where do you go? Okay, so you're supping on this breakfast. Where do you go first? Where where what's your first move, Jason? I mean, the first thing that caught my eye was that big round half of an orange. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that croissant, too. <laughs> I was going, you okay, left of the croissant, that the big old egg. Yes. A I, might go, life. I might go egg first. He's dumping egg first. 
All right, what do we got? Oh my god, and it's on the beach. That's a great location, yeah. Whoa. Oh wow. Is that fresh cut fruit and a big bottle of water? Oh my gosh. Pancakes with powdered sugar on them. That's great. Mm. Almost dropped my coconut. It looks so good. Whoa, what is that? Is that what is that sushi for breakfast? That's sushi for breakfast. This is a if this is a breakfast, this is an amazing breakfast. That's not possible. Sushi for breakfast? You okay, Jason? Yeah, I'm doing an impression of an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> now there's a googie breakfast. Looks like Bart Simpson. Wait, pens? Our Do therapy they... is for two o'clock PM. Mmm. Meta. They want to sup on us? Somebody does. Now that looks like an omelet. I think it is an omelet. Palm wow. trees in the sand. Trees in the sand. Tropical drink melting in your hand. That's a Beach Boys. It's a good time. And that's a good stack of waffle. Man. This is good content. This is great. All right, we got a lot. We got some. We got some fun and games we got to get to. Let's see. Here. <coughs> oh yeah, Justin. I hope you don't mind. I wrote a poem. No, I love it. I love poetry. Okay, so I thought a, a good segment for this show. All that. All that fruit reminded me that I wanted to do a salute. To fruit. Mm -hmm. So for this salute to fruit, I thought we'd start with the beautiful, the tangy, a little bit hairy raspberry. So this poem here is a salute to the raspberry. The raspberry of the genus Rubus in the family rose, much like orange is the new black actor Ruby Rose. Orange, you glad I rose this morning and saluted the raspberry? The raspberry, your surface red and hairy. If you had a raspy voice, would it be scary? Would it be rasp Mary, like the mask carry? Jim Carrey, jam berry? Or would you be forlorn on the bush where you are born, adorned with prickly thorn? and mixed in a bad salad with peas and corn. Or perhaps you are excited and delighted to be invited to join the slice of pie that I bited. On this 21st of May, I salute you, Rasp Beret. I dream of a perfect day when the science world will say, Vacation Jason, AKA VJ, we grew a berry the size of a filet. Mignon, ding dong, vacation Jason playing ping pong, put the paddle down and see what the bing bong, we grew a raspberry for you to ming mong, sorry I misspoke, I meant munch on, I need you eat, to eat it for lunch on this special table, are you able? to come to our lab and put on a special white coat and some goggles and a hat and eat a big raspberry? How about that? And I will say, nay, I shall not. I, but our experiments and advancements have been for naught. And I will say, I will not eat a raspberry modified until you develop one where my whole head may reside. Yes, a raspberry I can wear like a crown and I shall be the raspberry king and the raspberry trumpets will sound. <laughs> Mm. 
the raspberry. Thank you. That was a salute to raspberry. That was amazing. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, um, I went to a very, very, very deep place to, to construct that mere minutes before we went live. Okay. I think that you, you, you channeled something really true to get to that place. Because that is, it would take me years of digging to get to a place of being able to write something as meaningful as that. I, I accept some that. emotional depths, my friend. Justin, I must say though, the place you go to write your 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 sagas in song form, you're not that far off. You just do it your own way. I never thought about it like that. Come on. All right, we got another game. This is a lot like every other talk show on television right now. We're in our homes, we're playing games. This next game is called Rise and Shine Lines. You know when you wake up in the morning, you do that stretch, yeah. Oh. <laughs> we need uh we need we need an example of a category from the viewers of what what kind of thing to say a la vis-a-vis -vis our rise and shine lines what kind of rise and shine lines do you want to hear us say as in like a, a word that you would say while you're rising and shining and doing your stretch I'm gonna consult the chat room. I don't I don't know if okay. Yeah, what kind of rise and shine lines do you guys want to hear? The word to start your day. The stretch and release. Oh wait, are you guys I knew a guy who did rise and shine lines once. Got him googie for the whole day. Thanks, Andrew from Philly. These shine lines are dedicated to you. All right. Yo, uh, I'm getting. I saw someone say Rosebud. Yeah, Rosebud. Okay, about classic movie lines. Is that a good way to start the day? We said something like, uh, uh, yeah, Luke, I'm your father. Oh, I got the need to pick her boat. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. Uh, you are not a real toy. No, I'm trying to find a. I was trying to find his Toy Story line, but they are. They're all real toys. Yeah. No one says you are not, not a real toy. toy. <laughs> that's Toy Story Five. Oh wait, no, that's, that's Toy Story Four. The yeah, four. Forky. Forky. Yeah. yeah. Forky. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm as mad as hell, and I can't take it anymore. I couldn't think of a movie line. I live my life one quarter mile at a time. The opening hook from Immigrant Song while stretching. I don't know if I know the opening hook from Immigrant like, Song. Is it the, wait, is that the one? Yeah, go for the land of the ice and the snow. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. Is that it? Yes. I don't listen to enough Led Zeppelin. No, but you got it. Oh, good. Oh, you had me at oh. Yeah. Uh, vanilla sky. Ah, uh, the Incredibles. Uh, uh, Thanos. These are not classic movies. Marvel Cinematic Universe, unless you donate 69 cents to this show, you're canceled. All right. This brings me to our next segment. Um, let's see. Okay. Here we go. This is, the, this is the maybe the main event. We made it. All right. I'm excited. 
I've learned a lot thus far. I mean, I'm excited to see what you have in store here. I'm so happy you've been along for the ride. This is, I really couldn't have asked for a better first guest. This is very fun. Hey, I appreciate it. This is a blast. This is called the Breakfast Grand Slam. Not to be confused with the Grand Slam breakfast by an unnamed chain of diners, unless they want to sponsor the show. The Breakfast Grand Slam. Breakfast. Just because it's the most important meal of the day doesn't mean we can let breakfast get too big-headed. That's why Googie Morning is cutting breakfast down to size in a segment called Breakfast Grand Slam. We're going to put away the skillet, and we're going to do some breakfast roasting instead. So when I say Grand Slam, I mean we're slapping the shit out of breakfast. Wonderful. Now, like a Grand Slam, this joke format works like a baseball diamond. We got first base, second base, third base. And of course, breakfast always ends up on the home plate. So a little disclaimer, this first joke that I wrote for the breakfast grand slam, these aren't really roast jokes, but I'm running low on material. So we're going to go through them anyway. Category is eating a savory breakfast. First base. Well, that's not too crazy. Bacon and hash browns aren't unusual. Second base. Oh, now that you mention it, eggs are savory too. Third base. Damn, oatmeal's kind of a neutral base for anything you want to put in it. Home plate. Oh, shit, I just next leveled. I'm eating rice and beans for breakfast tomorrow morning. Perfect protein. Again. Not roast jokes, but now you understand, everybody understands the segment. Yeah, I get it. I got it. Justin, do you have a breakfast grand slam that you want to share? Um, so the four bases of breakfast? Yeah. Okay. Maybe I don't understand it. but I'll, I'll do another one. Okay, great. This one is actually kind of a roast on breakfast the point of this segment unlike the last one i did the category for this one is cereal because cereals had it easy for too long Mm -hmm. first base cereal and milk are you joking me all i'm seeing is crunchy cold milk soup second base tony the tiger is telling me frosted flakes are great i don't think so buddy frosted flakes are at best Average. Third base? Toucan Sam's telling me to follow his nose. What's next? Following him on TikTok? I don't got time to watch his bird dance. I'm hungry. Home plate. Grape nuts. No grapes, no nuts. That's just wheat and barley. They should change the name to crunchy ass beer ingredients that don't get you drunk and it tastes bad. Beautiful. Yeah. Donate money to Planet Scum, drop down menu, uh, uh, Googie Morning. We got to get you that green screen, man. You got to get me that green screen. Okay. Okay. I have another one if you're not ready. I think I'll try. I would love it if you tried. Okay. So, um, first base, regular sausage links. Come on, man. Those are. Nasty. Second base. Sausage discs. Man, you're telling me you're spreading out that disgusting thing you just tried to feed me? No, no, no. Third base. Uh, uh, Vegan bacon. It's the one thing you can't really substitute vegan-wise, morning-wise, because regular bacon's so good. So get that stuff out of my face. Although I I like vegan food generally but vegan bacon no 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 it's a great and, note. and then um i'm gonna go home with um uh vegan sausages though they're very good they don't carry them enough places and that makes me mad uh 
Did I, did I do it? You did it beautifully. Wonderful. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was overcomplicating it in my brain, but now I understand. It is unnecessarily complicated. I will give you that. Right, right. But when you when you understand it, it's like, oh, this is very simple. Just four roasts in a in a category. I got one for toast. You ready? I'm taking toast down. <laughs> toast has had it too good. For too long, man. Go for it. First base. Toast. Bread that's already baked, put in a toaster, aka a smaller, more specific oven. I'll be damned if toast isn't just a glorified leftover. Second base. I'd like to propose a toast to toast. Everybody raise your glass and pay tribute to the most thrilling food in the world. Reheated bread. Big whoop. Third base. French toast? What the hell are you talking about? Oh, is that like a French kiss where you eat the toast with an open mouth, moving your tongue all around to and fro? How the hell else am I supposed to eat toast? French toast, you're canceled. Or should I say your toast? Home run. Home plate. Don't get me started on avocado toast. Toast with avocado on it? What is this? Millennial California adventure? Avocado isn't on toast? That's impossible. Impossible? Don't get me started on the impossible burger. Or maybe you should. I had one. It was good. No toast anywhere near it, though. And that's probably one of the reasons why I enjoyed it so much. If Can you I do one? say anything with an angry attitude, what the hell is going on, uh, Jersey Dave? I think I got one. I got one of these. Better be, so, better if I'm allowed. I, look, everybody, if you haven't tuned in from the beginning, Jersey Dave's not a morning person. Mm -mm. So, But it's, I mean, it's the afternoon now, so now I have no excuse. Still good good morning to me. <laughs> now I'm just a curmudgeon, a regular everyday curmudgeon. So, all right. Um, I got one. Uh, I got to take down a breakfast food here. Let's hear it. Grapefruit. Oh. First base. It's bitter and it tastes bad. Second base. Uh, it's like an orange, but it's pink inside. Move along. Third base. Uh, yeah. I got a, like a, a utensil that's just for this, a little like spoon with a knife on the end. What is this? Unnecessary. <laughs> uh, home plate. Grapefruit? Grape is already a fruit. This is nonsense. Wow. That was, wow. And then he just exits immediately. Because <laughs> he knows that I was going to chastise him for roasting fruit. We don't do that on Grand Slam breakfast. I mean, yeah. breakfast grand slam. Fruit Sorry, I, I did just bail on you there. If you uh, would like a moment to respond, I think you deserve it. Listen, Jersey Dave, I respect you. Past tense. I respected you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, that That's was good. good. That was a good analytical, very level-headed, uh, much-needed criticism of grapefruit. Yeah, I, yeah, I do feel like I it was a bit of a personal shot. I know your relationship to fruit, um, and I'm a big fruit fan myself. But that one, I just don't know about it, man. Well, maybe next week I gotta do a salute to grapefruit to win back all the grapefruit advocates that may be uh, stewing in their shorts right now. Yeah, we just had a big drop of viewership because everyone just uh, was a bunch of grapefruit heads. The citrus industry is in is in turmoil. That was most of our audience, and, and then they just uh, yeah, I pissed them all off. I got another. I got my final uh, breakfast grand slam is about smoothies. All right, smoothies. lay it on. Had it too easy for too long. <laughs> all right, first base. Oh, I'm so fancy. I'm a smoothie. I need to be blended first thing in the morning. It's too loud. It is too loud. I Second agree. Base. Oh, I made a protein smoothie. Oh, I made a green smoothie. Hey, guess what? I made a smoothie. I made a smoothie with all the leftover scraps of food collected in my kitchen sink drain. It was really bad and it made me sick. I'm never doing that again. You learned your lesson, yeah? 
third base, smoothie, smoothie. That's not a name for a food. No other food in the world is just the texture of the food with an IE at the end. Oh, yeah, I woke up this morning. I ate a fresh round crunchy with a nice big scoop of peanut sticky spready and a <laughs> glass of... <laughs> A glass of what? <laughs> a glass of grapefruit, wetty and soury. Smoothies, you're canceled, okay? <laughs> We're rounding the bases to home plate. I just like going to my roommate and be like, "Hey, I'm gonna have a. I'm just gonna have a crunchy this morning. Crunchy with a little I, peanut, peanut sticky, <laughs> smooth sticky. You can try it." Home plate, jamba juice. Jamba, as in jambalaya? If you ever in your little life <laughs> put a cup of hot jambalaya in a blender, you blend it up, you put it in a plastic cup, and you charge me $11 for it at the airport, I have no respect for you. Except maybe I do, because that actually sounds not that bad. I have change of heart. Because I'm open-minded, and this gives me a psychological advantage that I will use to master my morning. Beautiful. See, you could, you could grand slam a breakfast in many different ways. Sometimes you got to come at it from different angles. That's why they call me the sidewinder. Mm -hmm. And who, who calls you that? Me. I know I do. I called myself that one time in, uh, I think, ninth grade. Okay. You went? Did you go to? Did you go to school, vacation, Jason? Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, I can't talk about it. Ah, uh, school sucks. Yeah, too painful. School sucks. Don't school worry about sucks. it. Sucks. Uh, don't worry about it. Sometimes I don't go to school, but sometimes I do just open the door to a classroom and the professor's like, oh, excuse me. And I'm like, uh, yeah, uh, fire drill. And then I have a, like a power drill that's on fire. That you invented. That's right. Yeah. And then, and then the teachers, what does the teacher say to that? The teacher, the teachers, the teacher's glasses break they just like the shockwave of my charisma hits their face and it their glasses split off. Yeah. They're making a face while they do it. They're like, and then the glasses break in half. Yeah. Like, my, yeah. my God, is that, is that vacation, Jason? <laughs> and then the music video starts. Do, 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 do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. We have one more segment. I don't think I have it on my phone, which is a real shame because it's, it's the best segment. Oh, uh, shit. What do I do? Um, all right. This is, this is the end of the show right here. This, this segment is, is – we're talking a lot about teachers. We're talking about lame teachers. This segment's called Talk Like a Lame Guy. Okay. And it goes like this. You know how lame guys will do like really long, extended, uh, like stream of conscious impressions of people that they think are lame? E sure, yes, I can wrap my mind around that. Yeah. So I'm going to present with you a scenario, and you're going to do an impression of a lame guy doing an impression of the thing that he doesn't like. Okay, I got it. I'll start. No, you want to start? <laughs> sure, sure. I, I got this you one. You read the email I sent you, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. We're going to put 60 seconds on the mm -hmm. clock, and you're going to do an impression of a lame guy complaining about long, complicated Starbucks orders. I'm going to put, I'm going to do 60 seconds on the clock. And are you ready? Ready. Three, two, 
One, hit it. So do you, when you're waiting in line for your coffee and there's somebody who's in front of you and they are making the most complicated order. And I personally, I just like a black coffee with a little bit of milk in it and a little bit of sugar. Um, but they're going off and they like, they want the double shot of espresso in their coffee and they want a little bit of, you know, special almond juice in their coffee or whatever the hell you call it. And I'm over here and I'm just like, when did coffee orders become complicated? When I was a kid visiting New York City with my dad, I would go and I would order a coffee from a food truck and they didn't say, what kind of coffee do you want? They just said, do you want milk or sugar in it? You know, it wasn't this complicated Americano espresso double shot of yes. almond blood or whatever yes. it is. Keep going, keep going. I am truly, truly disgusted and angry. Time. I really like your lame guy voice. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's I've been practicing it for years. Is it is it inspired of any by anyone specific you want to slander? Um. Sorry, I just I, I was reflecting back on this person in my life, and uh, it's too painful. It took a lot of energy mentally. Yeah, too painful. All right, who is spamming in the chat room just typing numbers? Doesn't matter. Why did I give them attention? All right. <laughs> they're doing a countdown. They're on a little bit of a delay, but they were doing a countdown for Justin. Oh, got it. I have the stopwatch up on the screen. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to challenge myself. I got to tell you, one time, this, this was all inspired because one time I went undercover. I went to a wedding holding a tray with drinks on it. I wasn't working. I was undercover pretending okay. to work. Did I collect money? Yes. Was I working? No, because I kept a very vacation mindset. But at this wedding, right before the, uh, the, uh, the ceremony began, the guy got up onto the mic and he started talking like this. All right, guys, uh, you may notice that there's some professional photographers here. And so I'm going to encourage all of you to put away your phones. Because the, the, any picture that they take is going to be better than any picture you take. I don't care if you have the newest iPhone XL SE iPhone Five, six, seven, eight, nine X. I don't care if you got the HD 4K mega super lens, Twitter jump cut, super editor, iMovie lens, Steve Jobs signed my phone, sold it on eBay, bought it from myself, XP. Microsoft, super duper, uh, titanium, Apple, mango, extra large, McDonald's phone. It's not going to be better than any picture that the professional photographers are taking on, on their cameras. Well, you know why I love that, that speech? Because people don't understand. You have to break it down for them, and you have to really take your time with it. You know, you can't just say, "Hey guys, no phones. We got a photographer here." You no. really have to make them understand how how stupid they are. Yeah, for, it's yeah. like it's like a it's like a it's like a satire on yes. on the world of phones. Like we all know that different phone models have different names, mm -hmm. but. What is really absurd and really skewering of that whole logic is the mm -hmm. idea that there would be a phone name so long that it would sound like a long, poorly thought out ramble. Yes. It's brilliant satire. Brilliant satire. Does anyone have any, ex like, a prompt of a different lame guy ramble that we could do? I, I'm going to, I'm going to, maybe I should rename this lame guy ramble. Yeah, lame guy 
Lame can guy Aaron, ramble. Can Aaron Dugan call yeah. in? I mean, as much as I would like to, I would like to have you call in. I don't think we can do calls right now. We're, we'll figure something out. Okay. Just do Chris Gethard. I already did Chris Gethard. You did it earlier in the stream. Uh, okay. missed it. Chris Gethard doing what? Chris Gethard doing what? Uh, about movies. He's talking about movies. Like a like a uh, Marvel movie. Okay. This is gonna be mentally taxing. To get into the mindset of this man. <laughs> All right. So you know he's kind of like so uh, I wanna go see the newest Marvel movie. And I'm I'm thinking like oh it's just gonna be a normal movie. And, you know, uh, I'm going to have some fun, maybe see some superheroes. I'm watching this Marvel movie, and, and the trailer before the movie gets started was like, in a world. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I've seen a lot of trailers within a world. But then it was like, comes along a hero. And I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, a lot of movies have heroes, you know, I've I know a movie with heroes in it. That's what I'm going to see right now. But then it kept going. It was like from the maker of this other movie. And then it was like from the producers of this movie. And I'm like, I don't need to know that. And it's like, okay, well, from the studio that brought you this. I don't care about the studio. And it's like, okay, well, how about uh, from the Academy Award winning director of this movie? I'm like, I don't want to see Oscars. Uh, we all know that awards are just bought and sold. And there's this, this kind of thing that, that just gets shopped around so that people get more emotionally invested in the movie uh, business. And it's like, okay, well, well, from, uh, from the, from the creative minds that wrote this book, it's like, look, I'm not going to read the book. Just tell me what movie it is. And it's like, well, okay, well, how about from, you know, last year's landmark successful uh, prequel. And it's like, look, just tell me what the movie is. And then it's like a Coca-Cola Commercial made by student filmmakers. <laughs> I don't drink Coca Cola. Oh man, that was rough. Yeah, doing that psychological work to get into that mindset. Stephen <clears throat> says a person with a lot of integrity. Yeah, structural integrity of the backside of his pants because they're going to get blown out with diarrhea. <laughs> Got him. That was he an epic diarrhea anymore, guys. Epic roast, Jason. Breakfast grand slam. <laughs> Shitting your pants is so it's so 5 years ago, Gethard. I I can't I can't roast him for that anymore. Mm -hmm. He doesn't talk about it anymore. It's not what he talks about. Well, I think it's it, a new yeah. era. Yeah. Uh, all right. I think we got through everything I wrote. We got through all the questions. We even did some D.D. King. We did our first installment of talking about my favorite album in the world. Yeah, you got to do that every week. <clears throat> we might have raised a little bit of money. For the green screen, we might have raised a little bit of money for Justin Linville. And hey, we even got Jersey Dave to slam grapefruit. What more could you want? I'm pretty satisfied here. I think it's time for oh – man, I should have thought of a way to sign off. I guess I just assumed this was going to go on forever. <laughs> you know, it's not morning anymore, guys. We got to wait until tomorrow morning to influence positively the rest of the day. Your day has already begun. What will you do with this positive energy that we have generated together? I don't know. All right. I want to let you know it may take a while, but the Vacation Jason Book Club is going to be real. We're really going to do it. Justin Linville, anytime you want to be on Googie Morning, come on back. Anytime. I would love to. This was a, this was a 
transformative experience and I'm going to lead my life much differently after this. All together, we will converge and create a better morning routine that will influence the rest of our day. Mentally, physically, spiritually, we will become uh, more googie. We will. Oh, look out for that sunrise tomorrow morning, everybody. Look for the sun. And um, Jersey Dave, do you have any? How should what what should we do? Should we end this with what? How? Is he there? Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe just say goodbye. I got a little graphic I'll throw up, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, have a googie googie afternoon. Googie afternoon. I want to I want to thank everyone for watching. Thank you for donating. Thank you for keeping Planet Scum going. It's a brand new experimental online comedy venue with uh, all kinds of programming that is going to uh, hopefully uh, bring us together during this strange time. Okay, that's a good way to end. Thank you. Thank you to Chris for allowing me to do this. Thank you to Justin for joining me. Thank you to Jersey Dave, Bryson, and Jess for being the producers behind Planet Scum. And most of all, thank you for visiting. Googie morning, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>